continue to bless you, that you may continue to bless and raise your families and send them the way they should be. There's so much that goes on in the world today where people doesn't have mothers to guide them. So it's a blessing for you all. Thank you. We're going to read this morning from Psalm 34, verses 7 through 22. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are ever grateful and thankful for this moment, Lord, you have given us to come together to worship. Father, we are thankful that you bless the hearts of these mothers, Lord, that they be able to raise their children and guide them in the right direction. Lord, we pray that where they have things that look like not going right, but God, you have given unto them, Lord, it's not that they fall, but we pray that you will move upon them and bless them. And bless the ones that they are raising. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 34, verse 7 through 22. The angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear him and deliver them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any in their name. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and love of many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and deliver them out of all their troubles. The Lord is not to them that are in the broken heart, and save the such as be of a contract spirit. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. He deeply all his bones, and all of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of the servant, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I believe there's a song about that we'll have to learn. But um, I tell you, his word is like honey many times. I tell you, the Lord comes and Brother Bob was saying when he comes with a supernatural revelation, I tell you, it uh, can be bit, bitter to digest and change and go through that yielding. But I tell you, it's sweet like honey. Um, Brother Michael, would you come this morning and lift up the tithes and offering? Sister Beverly, is she here? Sister Beverly, would you like to come and give your testimony? She has a testimony this morning. So, yeah, so enjoyed her testimony last week. And, um, you know, I've been studying a little bit on testimonies, and you never want to lose your testimony. That's how uh, we overcome is through our testimony in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be here. I know that God is real. And I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. It's so sweet to trust in him. You know, I've been through so many tests and trials, fiery trials I'm talking about. You know, there's a time when I was going through something that was hard. I can't hardly bear. You know, this lady here, she keep calling my house, want to talk to my husband. Constantly, I wouldn't stop. So I told her, I got on the phone one day and I found out that she was a problem. And I told her, if she don't stop this problem, she's going to pay a price. And she better leave, stop calling num- my number and want to speak to my husband. I told her she's going to pay that price. She cannot even afford it. She better stop it. And she wouldn't listen. She keep on and on and on. So one day my husband, he got incarcerated over all the trouble. And he called me and told me that he's, call it call, you know. He told me he's going to send that person to my house. I need to give her a few hundred dollars to get him out. I was so grieved to know that same person going to come to my house now. So when she comes, she's dressed up in some kind of outfit, you know. It was terrible. But I had the money, a few hundred dollars in the envelope. And I, she knocked the door a few hours later and I gave it to her. So she left. Before she left, before he told, before she come, and I was talking to my husband on the phone, I want to go and get him, you know. I said, let me come. He said, no. I went right on my knees and started talking to God then. Come, my knee is my neology, you know. I got to get on my knees when I'm having trouble. Yeah. I love to run on my knees. And that's what I do. So I talked to God and tell him all my troubles. Anyway, she went, when she got the money, she went off and left. And a few hours later, my husband calling me and telling me, can I come again? And we don't understand what happened. She come to help to get him out. And now they arrested her. Can I come? You don't understand why would God do that? Because she only trying to help. I said, thank you, Jesus. I went and got him. And um, a couple days later, she called my house and said, can she speak to my husband? I gave him the phone. She told him, can he call her father in Florida and ask him to waste certain units a few hundred dollars to get her out? And he took me with him to the store to get the money. He talked to her father first and he told her he was going to waste certain units the money to him. So he got the money. And... Um, a, a day later, he, we got the news that the father died sudden and they don't know how he died. So my husband said, oh, oh, he's going to keep that money. He's not going to get her out. He's going to go shopping with that money. So he took me to the store and started shopping and doing what he wanted to do with that money. And I was like, okay. And I've, time passed by and later on we heard that she died. It's like, oh, my goodness. I didn't have to put up a fight. God fight my battle for me, you know. He is that real. He'll fight your battle if you let him. So I thank God for being there with me, for me. And always, I mean, he's so good to me. I love him because he's a present God in the time of trouble. Thank the Lord. Amen. I like that. Neology. You got a living God that comes on the scene. He's definitely a present help in the time of need, no matter what the circumstances are. Amen. Let's sing that chorus. Um, I'm sorry, that song, Victory in Jesus. You have the victory this morning. And if you don't, there is victory waiting on you. And it's in our Lord Jesus. Amen. I heard an old old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood
course he is Lord and we're going to ask sister Trudy if she would come and get ready for her special oh he is Lord yes he is Lord you say happy mother's day to all the mothers and like brother joe said even the non-mothers you have a special part as well in this ministry um i wasn't planning on singing today but we're gonna praise the lord anyhow Sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer up to you the sacrifice 
sacrifice of joy. Sing it with me, saints. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Always rejoice when we come into his courts this morning. Amen. We have a couple here this morning I hadn't seen in a while. We have Brother Michael, Sister Esther, and a uh, new red couple. We're going to ask them to come up this morning and bless us with a special. So, good to have you back here. I 
so good to see him this morning. I tell you, it's, that's what we want to do is uh, pledge our heart to the Lamb of God. Right, let's sing that uh, song. Let the worshipers arise. Amen. Are you ready to hear the word this morning? We're going to sing this song and um, tell you this song. It really speaks volumes of where we are and what God's doing in the bride at this time. And we'll sing this song and have our brother to come out after we get through the verses. Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand. And I want to be standing, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come, let it live in me. This is my prayer, this is my plea. Let the worshiper arise, let the sons and the daughters sing. I surrender in my own. I surrender to the King. Sing that chorus again. Let the worshiper arise. Let the sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering. The Lamb arising with the book of his redeemed. We have opened up the seals, and now the bride will see this brand new revelation. Oh, it's a song of eternity. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is our King. Let the worshiper arise. The bride's grown in, in the word of your king. Oh, she is rising now in power. She's anointed to see. Oh, the seals have now been opened. There's the grass and mystery. This is our song. The song of the redeemed. Let the worshiper arise. Sons and the daughters sing. I'm surrendering my own. I'm 
surrender to the King. Let's sing that last verse. Oh, Father, I see the bride rejoicing in the song of victory. Every chain of death is broken, and we have been set free. Good to have each and every one of you with us today. Good to have uh, uh, Michael back with us. Praise the Lord. Oh, hey, Esther, how are you? I miss that voice singing, man. But uh, good to have you with us. I hope that uh, marriage is doing you well. It looks like it is. It looks like everything's good. And at least Esther's smiling. So that's good enough for me. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Um, br- Brother Joe was talking about what Brother Brown said, and if those of you that was on WhatsApp know that Brother Anderson sent us a quote where Brother Brown says, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but there's a fifth Gospel, unwritten, that's Mother. But remember, she gets you before the Gospels do. She gets them before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's teaching gets them. So you got to get them started right. Amen. A good godly wife, good godly mother, a sister in the Lord, whether you've had children or not, you've impacted somebody's life in being a mother because we can't be mothers. We cannot do that. So happy Mother's Day. And and when we get ready to leave today, uh, there'll be gifts gift cards as you leave to all the sisters above the age of 18. All right, we're going to have to have a cutoff time because that's kind of married marrying age or adult age. So 18 and above, uh, we have a little gift card for you and, uh, and a, um, a signed card saying how much we appreciate you as a church. All right, we appreciate every one of you coming. I want to read this. Uh, Jim sent it to me and... Uh, I want to read it to you. It's, it's kind of fitting. If you don't mind, we got time today. We're good. All right. Listen to this. I never thought about this, but this didn't come from no message believer either. <gasps> Why God communes with men in the mountains, but not women. Man has always been con- commissioned. Go up on a mountain. Go up on a mountain. I'll talk to you. Go up on a mountain. He never commissioned a woman to go up on the mountain. But who was the first person to see Jesus after he was resurrected? So this lady wrote, now listen to this. Have you ever noticed how the scripture, in the scripture, men always go up in the mountain to commune with God? Yet in the scriptures, we hardly ever hear women going to the mountain. And we know why, right? Because women were too busy keeping life going. 
They couldn't abandon babies, meals, homes, fires, gardens, and a thousand responsibilities to make that climb into the mountain. Think about it. God comes to the women. I was complaining about this to a friend the other day, saying that even as a modern woman, I feel like I'm never free enough from my, from my responsibilities, never in, a, never in a quiet enough or holy enough spot to have that type of communion. I'm talking about going up the mountain that I want with God. Her response floored me. She said, that's why God comes to women. Men have to climb a mountain to see God, but God comes to women wherever they are. I have been pondering on her words for weeks and have searched my scriptures to see what she said was true. God does indeed come to women where they are when they are doing their ordinary everyday work. Remember Mary, Martha, different ones. He meets them at the well where they draw water for their families, in their homes, in their kitchens, and in their gardens. He comes to them as they sit beside sick beds, as they give birth, care for the elderly. And perform necessary mornings and burial rituals. Even the woman at the empty t- women at the empty tomb who were the first to witness Christ's resurrection were only there because they were doing their womanly chore. They didn't come there to see Jesus. They came to what? Anoint him. They came to do their job, their duty. And he met them doing their duty. The chore of properly preparing Christ's body for burial. On this seemingly mundane and ordinary task, those women found themselves face to face with divinity. So, if you like me, this woman writing it, if you ever start to bemoan the fact that you don't have as much time to spend in the mountains with God as you would like, remember God comes to you. He knows where you are and the burdens that you carry. He he sees you. And if we open our eyes and our hearts, we will see him, even in the most ordinary place and in the most ordinary things. Praise God. This lady's name is Heather Farrell, if you want to look her up. That was quite profound to hear that from a sister's perspective. And sometimes we get all... You think you get wrapped up in things. It's kind of like Mary and Martha, you know, they kind of got, you know, they had a little argument there. The Lord, you know, I'm doing the cleaning and why ain't this one doing? He said, okay, just hang on a minute. She's doing her job. You're doing yours. Uh, in other words, it, it may, the tables may turn. So same way with all of us. Sometimes we think we don't get to commune with God because we're, we run downstairs and have to get the food ready. And, and uh, like last night, we got we had pizza, and thanks, everybody, for coming to Bible study. It's not Bible study. It was questions and answers, all right? And we had a real good time, real good time in the prayer service, and we appreciate y'all coming and um, and being a part of it. Uh, remember, Brother Luis is at, in Florida today. Hey, Brother Stan Price is. They had a minister's meeting, so he met some people that come from Arizona or somewhere, I think. <clears throat> remember, today we only have one service. Then we're going to have a baptism service. We're going to baptize Brother Luke. And if anybody else wants to be baptized, the water is warm. And we will be able to do that as soon as the service is over. We'll just continue on down there. All right, Brother Bob will be speaking for us this Wednesday night. He preached my sermon again today. I like that. That's the way I I don't. It doesn't bother me. That's the way God works. You know, I didn't call him. He didn't call me to ask the subject we was preaching on today. But uh, <clears throat> the Lord laid something on my heart last night about deity. And we're going to talk about deity because that has everything to do with the statue of perfect man. On the 20th, which is next Saturday, we have our youth service. Everybody's invited. It's a regular service, but it will be for the youth. We're expecting a good many people to come. If anybody wants to open their home, they can open their home and say, I can, you know, I can take care of a few. we got some coming from um, uh, Macon. And um, Brother Robbie says he's probably going to try to get here and with his family. And I told him we'd try to find him a place to stay. So um, I'll be coordinating that with all of y'all during the week. Uh, we're going to have a taco bar. So I want these sisters to get with Sister June and see about what you want to bring. Um, everybody knows what a taco bar is. It's a it's a it's a 
It's got all the condiments, and you make your own tacos. You just walk up and make your own. Not a walking taco like we had in Ohio. It'd be a little too messy. We'll just keep it as, as a taco bar. So get with Sister Jim, and, and uh, that will be what we'll have next Saturday. We'll start at 3 o'clock until, and then next Sunday we'll only have one service. Brother William Borlevon will be with us for both services. Also remember... Tomorrow, I'm having five teeth pulled at one time and a partial put in. So just remember me um, in prayer that uh, those things will come out. I, they come out already, so some of them have them. We pray that the other ones just slip right on out. All right, remember now June the 17th. That's next month, but I want to announce it because I want to tell you something. June the 17th, we're going to go fishing at the pond at Terrence and Zach's. And have hamburgers and hot dogs or low country bowl. We'll have something for the men and their and their children, uh, boys. It'll be for the boys only. But I talked to Brother Andre yesterday. We were going to try to go up there that weekend, but they have something already planned. So Brother Andre's always wanted us to get together as two churches and, and put a, a meeting together. So I want to propose to you these two dates. Because in July last year, remember, about 50 of us went to Ohio. So I propose that we go to Brother Andre's that weekend. That will be in Irwin, Tennessee. Most of you know that because most of you have been there. Our ministers have ministered there. We were there when we were kids. But July, either the weekend of July, which will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, July 14th, 15th, 16th, or July 21st, 22nd, 23rd, we'll have a church service on Saturday night. One of our brothers will be speaking and then um, we'll decide Sunday morning who will speak there. But we would love for all of you to come, uh, We for everybody. This is for everyone to go if you would like to do that. I don't think we'll get transportation, but it's only three and a half hours, so uh, we'll pay you gas money or something to get you there, or we'll all carpool. But just keep that. That's in July, so just be thinking about we Brother Andre um, suggested we do it then, and, and we don't have a July service for the youth so the third saturday in july will be the 15th all right but he's going to check with his they have a small group and we're going to have to pitch in and help just kind of like we did in ohio they pitch in and help them a little bit but not not much we'll be okay but there's fishing uh there's um hiking there's mountains there there's rivers there's a lot of things you can do kayaking canoeing and stuff if um we'll get all that together if you'd like to go so Weekend of July 14, 15, 16, or 21, 22, 23. You let me know either one or one or the other. And hey, Brother um, Andre will ask his group today, and then he's going to call me either tonight or tomorrow. All right, so, and we're going to invite Brother Richard Wilson and his church to come too, and uh, we'll just try to have a good time in the Lord. All right, so all minds clear. Happy Mother's Day again. Gifts in the back. When you walk out the door, see Brother Terrence, the tall guy in the back. He will give you... A gift card. Now, if you got a gift card and you don't like, because it's several different things. It's gas, food, coals, belts, Target. Hmm? Target. and Target. So, you know, y'all have a y'all have a swap meet downstairs after we have the baptism. Y'all can have a swap meet and say, "Well, I don't ever go to Coles." Well, I do. So, let's they're all $25 a piece, so no one's going to get cheated out of anything. So, but we do have gas, eats, and a place to go buy stuff. So just uh, uh, we appreciate um, anything that the church does, all this. It's it's uh, it's something that we want to do for the mothers. Amen? So let's give yourself another hand again. <clears throat> this is not bad. We got, uh, we got time to do things. But we got one service. So we're going to preach just a little while. Like I said before last night, I um, was thinking about something and, and the the, the word deity, uh, and we'll weave it into this statue of a perfect man in just a few minutes. So let's bow our heads. I know we all have needs. We all have things that's going on in our life. Remember Brother Luis as he comes back home today, and all the ones that are traveling. Uh, good to have Brother Aaron and his family back. And it's always, you know, Bob and all them are gone. It's always a piece of the piece of the body's gone, and we're glad when they get back. Amen. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day that you give us. It's a Mother's Day. And Lord, as you said through your prophet, there sets or stands the fifth gospel. 
something that will we as men can't be mothers we can't mother a child like a mother can a mother can can enter into things and and emotions and feelings that we as men can't and they enter in lord as each other as the scripture says the elder will teach the younger and father we pray that that you'll keep our elder sisters strong so that they can teach the younger ones how to do the different things as we talk about doing sewing and cooking and stuff like that of life but even in scripture and in shining their light to each one father just be with us now to further this service we thank you for all things we thank you for the a church that we can go to a, a a building with people in it because without the people here today it, we couldn't have a meeting but father they all brought their little lick of fire and now we're going to put them all together and we're going to hear from you lord i pray that you'd take over this service and you'd be the active participant you be the one that does the speaking and the hearing please reveal yourself to us today lord let us grow stronger and better and higher and closer to you forgive us of our sins lord we all had we all raised our hands there was a need behind each one lord i pray that you'd meet each one of those needs father in the name of jesus we ask amen all right let's read and you be seated in the beginning was the word where was with god and the word was god and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth second peter one says besides this wait a minute I'll get you. I forgot to uh, make it go up here. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Hold on. Is that better? Okay. Let's go a little bit more than that. How's that? Okay. For the ones in the back. All right. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. What? Full of grace and truth. Second Peter 1. It says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, temperance patience, patience godliness, and godliness brother kindness, and brother kindness charity. Look at that scripture back in verse 5, because it's going to be important once we get a little bit further along in the pyramid teaching. It's not a pyramid teaching. It's a teaching on the statue of perfect man using the pyramid as a graph. All right. It says, add to your faith. So as we said many, many times before, faith is not an ad. It's a birth. All right? Faith is not an ad. It's a birth. Because when we get to this brotherly kindness, you're going to see that, that, that it can't be that, there's, that, that faith is an ad. It's add to your faith. So you're taking your faith and you're adding something to it. And then we're going to look up at the top of the pyramid where it says Holy Spirit. And we're going to see that there's an interval, a time to just stop and relax and calm down. And we'll look at that as we continue on. You may be seated. Lord, add his blessing to the reading of the word. Good to have each and every one of you here. We've got a full house today. 1 Timothy 3, verse 16 says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. That's what we're going to talk about today. We've got through, we've got through virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience. We're at godliness. All right, godliness, and we'll read that, and I want to, that's where we're going to weave in. I want you to see who you already are, not who you're going to be. Then I want you to see who you're going to be. Everybody with me? I want, you got to see who you are first to understand what you're going to be. All right? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory and that word controversy is without strife without dispute without quarrel so there's no quarreling about what's going on today it's what we're speaking if we speak the word of god there should be no quarreling we should know the plan of redemption for those of you that are new that are not um that have not been here we believe that god had a plan and a purpose and he was going to see it achieved through a group of people not through himself because he wanted to be a father he wanted to be a savior he wanted to be a healer and to do that he had to make us Amen. all right as we were talking last night one of the questions was was adam the son of man and no adam was not the son of man 
Adam couldn't be the son of man because the son of man was some a, a, a person that I just read that came in human flesh through birth. Adam didn't come through human flesh in birth. He came through human flesh by creation. So he can't be your kinfolk, can't be your brother. Sure, he's part of the human race, the beginning. But he was not your savior. He couldn't save anybody. He couldn't even save himself. But the Son of Man came to what? Seek and save those who are lost. So he couldn't be the Son of Man, but he was the Son of God. Amen? <clears throat> so that's the plan of redemption. And we go through and we know that it, we know as, as Christians, especially in this church, we believe in justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And we were talking about that a little bit last night because there is a question in people's mind. Am I really born again? Is, is this really happening? Am I, am I a child of God? All right, and, and what stage am I in in my journey? Well, you just got to listen. You got to go to school. Amen? You got to go to school. You got to find out. You got to talk to God. Let him talk to you through what? Through a minister, through uh, listening to tapes, through, through reading, through all the different things, that, and praying. <clears throat> I told him last night we got finished praying and, and went back, went downstairs and... I told him, I said, I don't know what you prayed about, but I said, for 45 minutes, I was asking God to forgive me of the things I've done. Sorry, I was a little selfish last night. I prayed for y'all too, for a little bit, but I prayed because I'm going through some battles, all right? And I want God to help me, all right? I don't want to be selfish about it, but I do want to slip in there just a little bit and say, hey, here am I, Lord. <laughs> you know, I'm, we don't holler loud enough, I guess. But the plan of redemption is justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost. That puts you in the body of Christ, that gives you the new birth, or it gives you that faith. What? The faith of God. And I'll, and I'll show you a little bit, a little bit um, well, in just a few minutes, how that all works. Romans 8, verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, I got a number one by that. Whom he did foreknow, as we were talking about last night. I'm going to keep referring back. If you all have been here last night, all of you, I wouldn't have to refer back to last night. So anyway, I know you can't be here every time, but that's okay. But we had a good time last night. We learned a lot. But he foreknew. He knew everything. There's not one time God has ever been deceived or something happened that he didn't know. We were talking about babies going to heaven, and, and you know, what if you're going to, uh, two born again believers and you got a little baby and you go into rapture? Does the baby get stuck here? No, the baby goes somewhere. Now, listen, the baby's not bride. You got to be specific. The baby can't be bride. Bride is born again. Right? But God's not going to leave them here. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, man. Both of you. Both of y'all back here. Good to see y'all. So whom he did, who God? God's the only one that can foreknow. God's the only one that can tell the end from the beginning. As we were talking about last night. I'm sorry. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Eight billion people. Throw a piece of paper at me or something if I get too fast. Brother Anderson is interpreting, so we'll slow down just a little bit. I asked him the other day. I said, did you say everything I said? He said, He has to interpolate. And that's okay. That's all right. Paul's, Paul preached sermons. And um, did y'all see that on Facebook the other day where where somebody wrote and said, if Paul was here in the United States today, we'd get a letter. Because <laughs> remember, he go to the Corinthians and they got a letter. He went to the Thessalonians. They got a letter. He went to the Romans. They got a letter. <laughs> you know, all, they all got a letter. We'd get a letter if he was in America today. So 7 billion people at this moment, now there is 8 billion people in the world. 8 billion people, God knows every thought they're thinking and going to think their whole term of life on this earth. Amen. One man. Amen? So why are we going to worry about, well, I just don't know if God can do this and I don't want to worry God. He's never run out of memory. All right? He's the greatest computer that ever was. There is no time when you say too full. 
So he foreknew every bit of this, every situation you went through, going through, or will go through. He already knows it. But remember, he's not going to make you do it. He's going to see you do it and see you make a choice. Because you do have a choice. Remember I told you about the brother the other day and I was watching him online and I just, I couldn't believe that a message preacher would look you in the face and tell you you don't have a choice. I'm sorry, that's not Bible, that's not the prophet's message. You have a choice. You were born with a choice. You are a free moral agent until the day you pass away. That gives you a godlike quality to choose or reject. Amen? <clears throat> that puts you in a godlike quality. But he saw the choice you'd make. He foreknew you. Therefore, he could predetermine, because predestinate is predetermined. But he didn't predetermine, see, if, if it's like the brother said, that we just don't have a choice, then it is exactly what Brother Brown said God didn't do. It's put you in a tube and say, all right, this is where you're going to go. No, I like it where, where God knows he's so infinite. He knows that if, that if Monica and Bob would have never married, he knows who Bob would have married and what kids they would have. That's an infinite God. We're finite. We, 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 we funnel him down. He's not funneled down. He's a God that knows everything. But he did predetermine that he was going to have a bride. He was going to have somebody conformed in his image. He made sure of that, as we were talking about last night, in Genesis 1.26. He made sure he was going to make someone in his image and in his likeness. And they were going to have dominion over the earth. And they were going to multiply and replenish the earth. They were going to do what God said. Now listen, they did what God said. But they didn't do all what God said. God said multiply and replenish the earth. He never put them in flesh. He meant spiritual multiplication. Satan said, oh, I can get into human, I can get into human race if I just tell them to do this because the animals were reproducing and all these other, you know, the beast was reproducing. Come on, somebody. That's what he used. Brother Brown said he knew the principles of life. And that's the way he could get in was to get in Eve's womb of her mind first and then the act happened. There is no way except for rape and, and drugging and all that. There's no way for, a, for any of us to do what we do without thinking about it first. Well, pray for me. But he predestinated someone to be conformed. So in Genesis 1, he said, let us make man in our own image. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and everything that creeps on the, the, creeps on the earth. So he made a man, which was a spirit man first. But he didn't want spirit man. He wanted a man in flesh. Amen. So that's what he did in Genesis 2-7. He took that 126 man, put it in the 2-7 man, which was, as Brother Brown says, a man standing in the garden with roots like his feet, and then here's a man, 16 elements of the earth. Amen? Amen. And then he could commune with that man. But remember, as we were talking about last weekend, boy, we've got a lot of uh, comments about our vow renewal last weekend. I think we probably won't wait as long to do it again. That won't wait 15 years. I hope we're not here for 15 years more. Praise the Lord. Anyhow, sorry about that, but I, I hope we're not. Brother Boyd would be like mm, a hundred and something years old. 85, 95. And Joyce will be as old as you anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's what Terrence said. I'm just telling you what Brother Terrence said. But, we, but in the vow renewals, you, you look and you see that, that man, God was lonely, so he made man. So man comes on the earth. He communes with God, but there's something inside of him. There's a desire. There's a desire for him to have fellowship, listen, with himself. He desired to have fellowship with God. Sure, God would come down. They would walk in a cool today. But there was something inside of Adam that said, I need to get out to be able to communicate with whatever this is inside of me. And then what happened? So Adam, he lays Adam down, takes a rib, forms 
a body for Eve out of that rib, out of that 16 elements of the earth. And then he puts part of that Genesis 126, the female part, he puts it into who? Not Eve. Woman or Adam. Their name was Adam before the fall. All right, she wasn't Eve till after the fall happens. Everybody with me? So you see the same way. You and I don't have a name. We're, we're human beings. We're all these different things. But until you're born again, you don't have a name. Like the name that you're going to get when you get born again. Amen? But he made a group of people to be conformed to his image. So somebody's going to be that because, listen, that's his desire. His desire was to communicate with Adam and then Eve. And then all that got broke. But he said, I'll put enmity. In other words, as we're going to see here in just a little bit, he had to come back in flesh himself and become deity engulfed by flesh. Everybody with me? I know y'all patient yourself because you're not amening now, so maybe another two hours from now you'll be amening. Praise the Lord. Moreover, whom he... Don't groan. More, moreover, whom he did what? Predestinate. Them he also called. All right. So one, he foreknew what you would do. Two, he then made an earth, put you on the earth, predetermined what you're going to do by your free moral agency, by your choice. Then he called you. I mean, you're called if you're chosen. All right. He called everybody. See, that's where people of the message are so narrow-minded. Well, they just called us because we had this great seed in us, and that's what called. God calls every person because he's a righteous judge. You will stand at judgment. If you don't get the new birth, you're going to stand at judgment, and God's going to tell you the day, the hour, and the minute that he come to you and said, be my child. And you're going to know it, and you're going to walk away with your head down, and you're going to hell. Sorry. Like we said last night, there's not a black white dog. You either got the seal of, we talking about the seal of God and the, seal, and the mark of the beast. Because another question was, what was the mark of the beast? Well, the mark of the beast is being void of the mark of God or the seal of God. If you're sealed in God, you can't get the mark of the beast. Praise the Lord. You can't be, you can be deceived, but you can't be taken. When he seals that box car, it's sealed until the day of your redemption. You're sealed in, Satan sealed out. Come on, somebody. Deity is inside of you. God has locked the door, not you. No, I didn't shut the door of the ark. God shut the door of the ark. Amen? Everybody with me? Now, wake up a little bit. We'll say amen. Well, I'll help you pace yourself, okay? I'm the one doing the work up here. Y'all help me. All right, so he called. Whom he called, he justified. So if he called you and you said, I want more of you. I can't stand. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't want no more of this as we were talking about last night. Why would you want your former life? If your former life is better than the life you got now, you don't have what you think you got. Can I say that one more time? You don't have what you think you got if you want pieces of your former life. I'm trying to get it out where I never remember a speck of it. Praise the Lord. Whom he called, them he justified. He did it. And whom he justified, wow, he give you a glorified body. Because he's the one that's going to have to give it to you. A glorified body. Sister asked last night, said, Brother Brown says, no divine healing. No resurrection. She wanted us to explain me to explain that. Well, look at it. Do you know today, as we speak today, up in Gainesville Hospital, biggest hospital in the in the area, there's probably several thousand people in that hospital in different stages of hurting and dying. But God has sent a healing angel. The doctors can't. They can set an arm, but they can't make the bones grow back together. They can perform open heart surgery, but they can't start that heart back up. Oh, yeah, they do the paddle and all that stuff, but God's in control. And then they can sew you up, and you'll never heal unless God heals you. 
So God is healing people that don't even want, don't even care about him. He's healing me and you. If you're 98.6 degrees right now, you're being healed. As we said last night, I read in the paper the other day that you, you, you lose, every 10 years you lose, after you get like 40, you lose 10% of your muscle mass. No way to get rid of that because that's the curse. But you can help it and do something about it. You can put, not put, so much, put fat around it. Well, praise the Lord anyway. I thought I'd bring that out. But listen, God is healing us right now. So no divine healing, we all die. Take the, take the divine healing of God away from that hospital. Every person in that hospital will die within just a few moments. You lose oxygen. You lose the firing mechanism that's, that's pumping your... I, we were talking about last night, Brother Dale's 83 years old. He's 83 years old. Think about that in 365 days. Then think about how his heart has beat 74 to 80. Well, with y'all, him preaching to y'all, maybe 100, 100 beats per minute. From the time of being a baby till now. Now, who did that? God did that. Oh, no, my body. Your soul. Yeah, your soul is your fire mechanism, but who made your soul? Who keeps your soul inside your body? The healing angel of God. Sorry to get off of that, but that's what's going to be. Our glorified body is going to be that we don't deteriorate anymore. We'll still be 98.6 degrees, I believe. I don't believe we're going to be a bunch of cold people. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll be who we are, but there will be no blood cell deteriorate and then keep deteriorating and then keep deteriorating. Praise God. That's what we're heading toward. But it's all because of what? Grace. He's even extending grace to those people in the hospital right now. Healing them right now without them even knowing it and don't care. So now look, the impersonation of Christianity, 1957. Brother Brown said, and you're on the basis of what? Free Moral agency. That is the ability for you to make a choice. Amen. You can turn it down. Yes. Oh, don't tell me you don't have a choice. Yes. Yes. Come on. Right. You can preach all you want to. Brother Brown never preached we didn't have a choice. Right. But people in the message say we don't have a choice. Error. Amen. You can turn this down or you can accept it. Right. Right. To turn it down is to be lost and remain potash and calcium and petroleum. But to accept it and to have a what? A new heart. A new spirit. And his spirit. Part of the Logos. In you. Controlling your emotions. And when he coos through his word, you coo back and say, Amen. That's your answer to him. Your answer to him today is, amen. amen. Have faith. 1958. Someday, way back before there was any light on the earth, our bodies laid in the dust. Listen, our bodies laid in the dust, not our soul. Our bodies laid in the dust. We are made of dust, potash, calcium, petroleum, cosmic light. God sent forth the great Holy Spirit to brood over the earth. And as he brewed, the little flowers began to come and birds flew. Animals came up from the earth. And then came a man. And he sinned and separated himself from the fellowship of his God. And because of this horrible thing, he was commanded by God to return back to the dust of the earth. And if we don't take a body change, we are going to return back to the dust of the earth. All right? Because that's God's law. He just said it. Dust thou art, dust you'll return. But, oh, Lord God, we are so glad that before he returns, you have promised a Redeemer. And today, since he has come and sent forth the Holy Spirit again, and now he's still brooding over the dust, our bodies. And if he raised me and brought me to what I am now without having a choice. Now, if you stop right there, Brother Brown said you don't have a choice. No, you didn't have a choice to get here. Not one of you standing in this building, like I said before, I told him last night, you go in any auditorium, you go anywhere in the world, and you sit down in, in the airport, and you see five or 6,000 people in Atlanta back and forth. They all came from the same thing. They all came the same way. Everybody. 
came from an act between a man and a woman. I don't care if it was done by a doctor with artificial and all that. It was a man and a woman. And they were born through a womb or come through a woman. One of the two. Amen? All right? So, but remember, you didn't have a choice getting here. But when you get here, you get a choice. Because I read right here. Look. He made me what I am now without having a choice. How much more will he raise us from the dust of the earth after we've made a choice? And he has brewed to us and we brewed back to him. We love him. All right, a time of decision, 1959. Just as Eliezer watched that sign on the girl, you'll have to watch this sign of the church because Jesus said, I don't care what man said. I know men say these days of miracles is past. All this stuff is all past and going by. And there's no more. Now you've got to make a choice. Jesus said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be truth. Now you've got to make up your mind. And you've got to make a choice. Does that sound like not making a choice? Look, I want you to really read this quote. And this may be your last time to make a choice. Tomorrow may be too late. God might have chosen you. Watch this. Only a prophet could say this and make sense out of it. God might have chose you to eternal life. All right? But if you don't make up your mind and accept it, somebody else will take your place. Don't tell me you were born no special somebody. You were born dead. And you had to make a choice to receive eternal life. If you didn't, God's going to give it to somebody else. Somebody else will take your place. Uh, Wait a minute. Does everybody believe Brother Brown was a prophet? Okay, then we believe this quote, right? Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't in another group. 2 Samuel 22 verse 33 says, God is my strength and power. He maketh my way perfect. Now, we're heading toward godliness, all right? Philippians 2, verse 15, that you may be what? Blameless, harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke. Wow. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. This is the darkest world ever been, and you're a shining light in that darkness. Genesis 17, verse 1 says, As when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Abram had enough faith to believe if God told him he was going to make him perfect, God was going to have to do it. But remember, Abram made a mistake. He went and he got a Hagar and he went and did this and he he was supposed to go by himself and he took Lot with him. He was supposed to have this child, but now he didn't get the revelation that it was through Sarah, so he took Hagar. So see, he's making all kinds of mistakes, but God, what, by foreknowledge, he saw that Abraham would, what, endure, and that he would have the child with Sarah, all right? Same way with me and you. Now look, perfect is one who lacks nothing in physical strength or beauty. They're sound and wholesome. That's what we're looking at, the statue of perfect man. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You know what Jesus said? So uh, Jesus was saying, be thou sound or wholesome. Uh, A quiet sort of person. Complete. uh, Morally innocent. Having integrity. One who is morally and ethically pure. That doesn't mean be therefore perfect and that God made Abram perfect. And every day, the sun shined. The bills quit coming. Hello, somebody. My power bill just went up forty, fifty dollars a month. I must be lost. That's what people think. No, I don't mean nothing. That means you need to turn your lights off. Keep Sister Regina and okay anyway. We, even in the rapture, even in the rapture, we're going to talk about y'all leaving the lights on in my house. <clears throat> you and Sister Trudy back there. So anyway. But that doesn't mean, the, Brother Brown, I love what he said, though. He said, cloudy days didn't mean God was against you. Sunny days didn't mean he was for you either. You can't, the human things we were talking about last night, the human things that we do are human things. All right? But remember what I told you. What does the Holy Ghost do? You're going to have problems. 
You're going to have issues. You're going to have things in your life every day. But with the Holy Ghost, you will learn how to what? Suppress the fear. Because you got something inside of you that's different from the world. This world don't know what's going on. They are fearful of everything. That's why their heart is weak. But if you're perfect, you're morally and ethically pure. If you have a problem, you know how to handle it. Isn't that a great thing? Do we remember the time, though, when we were out floundering around the world and everything went, went wrong? Where did we go? We went to our intelligence. Hello, somebody. We went to our own intelligence or a book, you know, a self-help book or, a, or, you know, let's go to psychiatrist. It's okay if you go. It's okay. But you don't lean to that. Lean not to that of the world. you got to turn yourself to God. Read the Bible. Let the Bible tell you what you are, not what a psychiatrist is going to tell you what you're going to be. God's already told you what you're going to be. You're going to be perfect, established, pure. What? Morally and ethically pure? I really appreciate it. I'm going to give a star to where a star needs to go. I appreciate the several weddings that we've seen the last few months, including these sitting here, and Lois and Lucas and uh, Zach and Lily. And, and uh, like I said before, <laughs> purity. Amen. Something a lot of us can't brag about. But praise God there's some that can. And praise God that there's somebody like Lois and Lucas were here last weekend. That when they started to kiss, they'd never kissed before. It looked like two two year olds. Well, praise the Lord. I looked at that as innocence. To me, that's very that's to me that's what God wants. He wants you to be so innocent. All right? Finally he got a peck on the cheek because they were trying to aim and you know, it just ain't gonna happen. But practice makes perfect. I asked them the other week, and I said, y'all get that kissing thing down right? They said, we good. <laughs> but you know what? That's the way with God. When you get the new birth, you're just a babe in Christ. You're a new bride. You don't know what's going on because you're innocent of that. Whether you've been scarred and marred in your human life, but in the life of God, if you've never been born again, and then God bursts you into the body of Christ, you're a new creator, a creature, a new creation. You don't know about that. You didn't know about all that. But we do now. We know we've come into purity. He gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Look, till we all come into the unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God. Unto what? A perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature. That's what we're talking about. The stature of a perfect man of Christ. That we henceforth, look, that we henceforth be no more children. I would really have been worried if I'd asked them last weekend, have y'all got that kissing thing straightened out? And they're like, no, we're still having problems. There'd be an issue there. No, they had it straightened out. They've been practicing. That's what we need to do. We need to practice with the Lord. Get our heart right. Do the things of our... He's our lover. We're married to him now. There's a union that's undefiled. Well, praise the Lord anyway. That's what it is. When you get born again, you get married. But you can't stay a bride. You've got to be a wife. That will henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cutting craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. As I said a couple of Sundays ago, I want you to really think about this from that scripture. You only really believe what you obey. If you don't believe that church is important, you ain't going to come and you're an unbeliever. You don't believe what the Bible says. We've got to start believing every word of the Bible, not just the part. See, we like, we like, to, uh, uh, we like our own favorite little quotes. But why can't you take 
Brother Dale used to bring us 30 and 40. We were talking about the other day. He'd bring us 30 and 40 quotes of service. He covered that thing thoroughly. He would he would take the ones that seemed like, I said, seemed like contrary and make them fit the ones that we say is our doctrine. Everybody with me on that? All right. We pick and choose what we want. Same way with the Bible. Well, I'll serve you, Lord. Um, I'll obey you because I believe this, but I don't believe that. All right. When we come to Christianity, we should believe the whole word of God, not just part of it. All right. But if it's not your desire, then that desire is not in you because I'll read here in just a few minutes. Brother Brown said, if you got the Holy Ghost, you will do what the Word says because it's the same person that wrote it is inside of you. Or he's not inside of you. He's just anointing you. Uh-oh. Because there's going to be somebody, look, carried away with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Now, that word perfecting means completely or complete furnishing. It doesn't mean that you're not going to stub your toes. It's not going to mean that, that, that tomorrow that I'm going to walk in the dentist office and them five teeth that she's going to pull just automatically fall out. I wish. No, they're attached to me. And they're going to have to be pulled out because I'm a human. All right? By old age, some of them already come out. That's why we're going to fix them. But that doesn't mean one thing about, you know, if I, if I go sit down tomorrow and she sticks that needle in my mouth and it hurts for a moment, that don't mean I'm not a Christian. Oh, bro, wait, you done lost your Christianity. You hurt. You done lost your Christianity. You can't get healed. Now, that don't mean one thing. Nothing. Because you know what? Somebody can get healed. And not even be a child of God. Brother Brown says a, a prostitute can come to the platform, get her healing, and someone that's a child of God doesn't get their healing. Because they're thinking about, I did this wrong, I did that wrong. That prostitute just walks up and says, I believe what that man says. So she gets her healing. All right. Completely furnish, or furnishing or equipping. In other words, when something comes, you know how to handle it. When something comes your way, there's a way that you can not get around it but get through it. All right. We don't try to go around things. We go through them. All right. So now let's look. We come to godliness. Let's look at this. I want you to see something here that we didn't previously bring out, but it's, um, it means holiness, reverence and respect, piety towards God. That is godliness. All right. And brother Brown talks, tells us what to be like God. All right. So how are we going to be like God? We got to have a pastor. We gotta have a fivefold ministry. You can't press play and become perfect. I am so sorry. Nobody gonna amen that. Listen, that's a fallacy. That is a that is a um, evil spirit because it's not a spirit that comes from God. All right. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness, as we were talking about before. God was manifest in the flesh. Oh, by the way, we know that 2,000 years ago. Jesus was manifest in the flesh. What about today? Amen. You are not wood Amen. and bricks and mortar. God one time dwelled in that called a tabernacle. He done away with that tabernacle, and now he's inside of me and you. Now, let's read this real quick. 2 Peter 1, verse 3. This is part of what we've been reading, so I'm going to back up and read it. According as his divine power hath given unto who? Us. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. So the statue of perfect man, this teaching of we've been a hundred and something sermons, is I hope it's helped us even in life. Amen. Even to make our life better. Amen. Even if it was just a little bit. Amen. Unto life and godliness. Grow up in God. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of what? There's only one divine nature. That's God. That's deity. Everybody with me? Oh, that's deity. That's something way up there, brother. Wait, that's something. De- he's deity. That's God. 
Yep, I know that. But let's see what the prophet says about that. <laughs> Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and besides this, besides this divine nature, giving all diligence, add, and that's what we've been doing for a hundred sermons. We've been adding virtue, add knowledge, add temperance, add patience, and add godliness, and then we'll head to brotherly kindness. So let's look and see what deity means. A deity is something, in other words, supernatural. All right? The shaping of Western Christianity, all Western Christianity, is shaped around a deity. Everybody with me? All right? Shake yourself for a minute. We've still got an hour to go. I'm going to get to a place. All right? The word deity means divine nature. Now, hold back up here. What God tell us we might be what? Partakers of the divine nature. What is divine nature? The word deity means divine nature. I didn't come up with this. I got it off the internet. must be true. It was coined by St. Augustine, a theologian whose writings were very influential in the shaping of the Western Christianity. Deity comes from the Latin word for God, Deus. All right? The divine nature of deities is believed to be immortal, goodness, and powerfulness, or it's a noun that says any supernatural being. Well, listen, we got to know who deity is. Now, I want you to listen to this. It's going to be a long quote, but I'm going to read it anyway. Is everybody all right? Shake yourself. He swore by himself. Now, listen, this is 1954. This is Brother Branham preaching in the early part of his ministry. The little corn that come up here. Now, look, stop just a minute. What are we heading toward? We're heading toward the seed that went in the ground to grow and become seed again. He's coming after seed. He's not coming after plants. He's coming after himself. He's coming after seed, which is what? Maturity. You don't eat corn when it's like this or even like this or even when it tassels. You wait till it matures. Then you can eat corn. And then you can take that corn and you can dry it out, take that seed if it's if it's heirloom, not this junk they got now, but you can take that seed and next year you can put it in the ground and guess what it'll do? It'll produce two or three years of corn. Amen. All right? That's what God is wanting to do now. He's wanting us to come to the divine nature, come to maturity so that we can produce more seed, more of him. So here's Brother Brown's thought. Now, in that thought, listen. The little corn that come up here, the first thing the farmer looked and seen these little sprouts sticking up, wonderful. He rejoiced. After a while, they got old and withered away, and the corn went on. In it, the same life that was in this corn down here, down here, is the same life that's going to be up here. It's just going to be more of it, more mature. In it, the same life that was in this corn down here at the first stalk is in it up here in the ear and grain just the same. It just went on and on and on. So is the church growing on that perfect day when Jesus shall come. Same Holy Spirit, same thing, just different dispensation. What is our dispensation? Rapture. Body change. Getting out of here. That's our dispensation. We're not in a dispensation of justification anymore. Full grain, full corn, full maturity. That's a requirement. All right? To graduate, it's a requirement, part of the curriculum. So if you're going to graduate in the end time, got to have it. All right? Just different dispensation. Now, in moving of this, look. Take the heifers, the goats. Everything must be three years old, the three different dispensations. Fatherhood, sonship. Holy Spirit. See, three years, everything was three years, meant Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Same God that was under that dispensation is under this dispensation, under that dispensation, and will always will be the same. Only one God, three dispensations, not three gods, three dispensations of the same God. All right? The same God was in the pillar of fire, was in Christ Jesus. All right? The same one in Christ Jesus didn't go into you. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's read that again. The same one in Christ Jesus in you. That's right. God in you, the hope of glory. 
Is that right? The baptism of the Holy Spirit dwelling in the person now, you become what? Sons of God. When God condescended and overshadowed Virgin Mary, he was a life. And a life overshadowed and created a blood cell around itself. Anyone knows now that the blood cell comes from what? Comes from the male. Is that right? The life lays in the blood cell, and the blood cell is coming from the male, not the female. We know that, all right? There's where the life is, is in the male sperm. Notice, then God himself, not a second person, third person, the person, God himself came into the womb of Mary. He went from this great God that Brother Brown tells us in, in, in several sermons, and we, we, we preach it, where Brother Brown says, he covered all space, time, and eternity. You couldn't comprehend this eternal God. Amen. Then you see a little halo of light. Then you see a person standing there. Then you see a world coming into existence. He went right back down to a cell that you can't see except with a microscope. Uh, you think it's somebody different? Uh, no. That's what we were talking about last night. I, I just don't see where people can see that God, that Jesus wasn't God to the River Jordan. Well, he had to be somebody when he was born. God! God! He was God when he was born. He was God when he died. He said, oh, God can't die. No, you can't either. The inside man can't, but the outside man sure can. Then God himself came into the womb of Mary and wrapped himself in a created blood cell. Hallelujah. That's the reason we have eternal life. Then when that blood cell, because of sin, was pierced with a sword yonder and broke, in other words, at Calvary, it freed God yonder, and he broke open the blood cell and washed us and brought us into himself by the Holy Spirit. I want you to know what the Holy Ghost is today. I want you to really see. Uh, one, someone was asked last night, do you know if you got it? Well, just, let's just keep reading. Let's let Brother Branham explain it. All right. There you are, and now we are sons of God, part of God, not part of the second person of the Trinity. Not part of the third person of the Trinity. You're part of the Creator. Amen. Deity itself yes. lives in every believer. Right. Every man that's born of the Spirit of God is a part of God. No wonder he believes in the supernatural. Yes. See, no wonder I can stand here and I could go up into every hall at it, the hospital up there and say, God is a healer. I don't care whether they believe me or not. I believe it. No wonder he can believe in anything. Why is it in him is a portion of God wrapped up in your mortal body where there's sin and everything else has created that body that's inside of you. Outside of me. Then now watch. But down in there, I want you to see this terminology. Some work of God alone in regeneration. You can't do it. Your mama can't do it. Your daddy can't do it. I can't do it. Nobody can do it but God himself. There's only way. The only way that you're going to get born again is God himself comes down and cleans you up by regening you or giving you a regeneration Give you another mom and a daddy. Hello, somebody. Don't get quiet on me. Some work of God alone and regen. He does that for you. He doesn't do it in a collective body. In the quietness of your closet, maybe he did it. Maybe he did it here. Maybe he did it in a camper somewhere. Right here. Motorhome. You got birth somewhere. Or either you getting it, getting or either you didn't get birth at all. But if you are birthed today, this is what God did. Some work of God alone in regeneration has come down through there. What? Through this. By the shedding of his blood and taking away that blood that was in there as a way, set it aside. Set it aside. Got rid of it. Pushed it out of the way. And entered into this sinful man and put 
in him a hope that he'd die for it's just as freely as he's standing there. Speak to him. Sure, he believes it. Let's continue. This is a long quote. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink deadly things, or lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. This is not just for the preachers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus said that. Why? He's become a part of him. Yes, sir, God's on the instance of deliver anything. He'll make a way. When there's no way, he makes a way. And any man that believes in him believes the same thing. Listen, if God never heals another person, I still believe the healer. I mean, we, we, we want to just, you know, the Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And we, all, we have all these promises. Yet when we say Brother Michael does something, you know, he hurts his leg or something, he walks up here, he wobbles up here, and, you know, we pray for him. And we just, as human beings, we, in our thought process, it's like, man, he's going to walk back through there and he's not going to limp. He gets prayed for and here you go. Now, what does that do to your faith? It should never make it weaker. Because he said, lay hands on the sick and they shall. Now, we want a miracle every time. Everybody wants it. Listen, microwave society, here we are. No, we're crock pot Christians. It's a slow thing. And many, any man that believes in him believes the same thing. He has to. Now, look, Brother Brown's going to turn the screws, as we always say. He's going to try to tighten them up here right now. He's a part of God. He's an offspring of God. He's a son of God or a daughter of God. And he can't do nothing else. Because God's right with him. He's just a portion of God. Look, everything that God was in a pillar of fire, he emptied into the Son, Jesus Christ. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Is that right? The Bible said that God, G-O-D himself, Jehovah, the mighty one, the buckle of the shield... All his redemptive names, everything that he was, he emptied into Christ Jesus. Everybody with me? And Jesus Christ formed from a blood cell. And the outside shield of the cell itself, which was billions times billions smaller than a human eye could see, but that was the body of the Lord. Everybody with me? That's the, the natural body of Jesus. Inside of that was God himself wrapped himself around the blood cell in order to take his own blood, spill his own blood, or give it freely, that we, through the breaking of that blood cell, to our mortal, when it breaks and our life leaves from here and goes out through the redemption of the blood that God required, we can be brought into that body and become a part of God himself as a son of God. Everybody with me? Brother, if you can digest that, it'll sure do you some good. I wish I had some way just to show you what it is. Just think of God, Jehovah. Look, coming down into the womb of a woman, this great big God that created everything, he got into a sperm cell, went into the womb of Mary. He created the egg and the sperm, placed it in Mary by immaculate conception, no, no feelings or emotions of either one. But that was God. That was him making his own body. Man couldn't make him a body because it'd be sinful. He made his own body. But look, folks, he's making his own body now. He's making his own body right now. We take, oh, that's 2,000 years ago. He, listen, that baby grew up, went through trials and tribulations, died for me and you, came back on the day of Pentecost, and I hope and believe is inside of us. Amen. Coming down into the womb of a woman overshadowed, Come down in the down to spirit, and he's in there. What is he? He's the creator himself. He made the very woman in the womb that he was in. Made that woman. Who? Mary. God made himself little, came down and got into this blood cell and began to build something around him. What was it? See, what caused this thing back there at the beginning? Blood, blood, life was in the blood. And back there is what caused it in the beginning. Now take it away. God himself has to come down. And he made himself real little. 
come into the womb of Mary and created it around himself. Look, a wall. Human flesh. A wall. Which was the blood cell. No man know nothing about it. Created this blood cell. That blood cell pushed to another, another, another. One and all the nerves and everything began to come together. And God himself living in this, making a tabernacle, and he dwelt in Christ. There's God walking around. He said, I and my father are one. My father is in me. He said, show us now the father, Philip said. Show me the father and it will satisfy us. Philip, have I been so long with you and you don't know me? He said, when you see me, you see the father. When people see you in your daily walk, do they see the father? Or your natural father. And when you see me, you see the father. And why I say, show me the father. I and the father are one. My father's living in me now. It's not me that doeth the works. It's him that dwelleth in me. That does the works. Oh, my. Now, listen. Listen. This is what Brother Brown said. How can I tell a man what's wrong with him? How can I tell him what his future will be in 10 years? Or what he was 40 years ago? It isn't me. Hallelujah. It's him that lives in me. That come down, that through his blood brought me in fellowship with him. Hallelujah. How could my hands do anything by healing the sick? Hasn't got a bit of power. It's not me, but it's him that dwells in here that does it. He's pointing to somebody. How can this man preach the gospel? He can't preach no gospel. There's nothing in him to do it with. Wow. He's a sinner by nature. But God came down and dwelt in him, made him a son of God, and he preached the gospel. Why does he believe the word? Because the very God that made the word is preaching right through him. The very God that made the word. That's why if you got the word inside of you, you can't deny the word. We were talking about last night. If you deny the word of God, which is now the message of the hour <coughs> in its pure form, if you turn that down and say it's, it's not true, it's false, then uh, there's just no hope for you, folks. You just didn't get the Holy Ghost. But now listen, you can also be in this message for 40 years and get a gold star and die and go to hell. Because the very God that made the word is preaching right through him. How that I see it, do you see it? There it is. The very God that wrote the word is in the man saying that's the truth. That's what you're doing today, some of you, are saying amen. Because the guy that wrote what I'm telling you about is inside of you quickening. And that's the process of saying amen. That's the truth. I don't care what anybody says. That's the truth. There it is. God in the man, look, God in the man recognizes his own word. That settled it, God in here. Believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Is that right? All the scriptures inspired of God. God wrote it. When God comes in here, God recognizes his own word and says, sure, that's the truth. A believer. Now you go to doctrine it up somewhere, that's between you and God. But God recognizes his own word. Oh, how that makes us feel. God's inspired word. Listen to this. Faith, the substance of things hoped for, 1951. And the very God back there in the beginning that rolled the world, the moon, the stars, and made them from things which didn't appear. Or made them out of things that do appear. And where did he get the material to make it? He spoke it into existence by his word. He said, let there be, and it was so. Watch. Deity. And that, a portion of that deity, dwells in the heart of every born-again Christian. That's why Brother Brown could say you're a little creator. Then what did he say? Ask what you will. It will be given to you. There you are. Deity fell on the day of Pentecost. It's still falling now. And men are regenerated, made a new person, sealed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit. The life of Christ pressed into them. All their drinking, immoral habits, and everything go out. The love of God is like a notary public. <coughs> I happen to be one, Sister Rebecca is too. 
takes a seal, and, and what we do is, is we press the seal. We, we get certified, number one, then we, to make sure we're not criminals ourselves, and we, and we see, put a seal on it that signifies that what that paper says, that's what it is, and to the person that signed it. So now look, it presses it until the inscription of the seal is pressed in the paper over the signature. Oh my, when Christ signs your name on the book of life and the Holy Spirit presses it in there until the life of Christ is formed in you, becomes deity. Resurrection of Lazarus. Look, deity. I'm a part of Charles Branham because I was born from Charles Branham, my daddy. And I'm a part of him. I've got a forehead like him. My hair is like him. I'm a small man like him. I'm in the nature like him because he's my dad. Listen, when cats get together, they have what? Cats. Dogs get together, they have dogs. Horses get together, they have horses. Man and woman gets together, they have humans. When man yields himself to God and lets God in, you become God. And if we become in the spirit, sons of God, deity dwells in the man. Then you talk about blind eyes being open. They said nothing impossible to God. God said nothing impossible with you. Let me read that one more time. They said nothing is impossible to God. Right? What the Bible says. God said there's nothing impossible with you. If you'll believe not with God, but you deities in man. The very God that stood back in the mythical platform of the eternities and rolled worlds off of his hands and created these things, give you the privilege to be a son, <clears throat> and you're a part of him. God dwells in mankind and him himself. Man himself is deity. Hallelujah. There you are. It might choke you, but study over it a little while. He is, God dwells in man, and man becomes a son of God, not him and himself, but the Holy Spirit that's in him is God. The Creator lives in the creation. Oh my, how I think of that. Then stand with an unwavering faith. If you got something today, stand with an unwavering faith. And ask what you will. It will be done unto you. There he is, God. There he is. Inside of me and you. And you know why? If they hated him when he was on earth, deity and human flesh, they're going to hate you. This world is going to come to, and, and most of it. Listen, anybody that's, that's not born again is going to hate you eventually. Oh, yeah, they, you're good. You just strike them somewhere, you know, hit home somewhere. Preach the word to them. Tell them the truth. You'll see, Jesus told them the truth, and they killed him for saying he was God. They're going to kill me and you, even our influence, by saying... Oh, you're some special God person. Hallelujah! Let the world know that if God lives inside of this flesh, it is deity. It is God. According to John 1, 1, God was put in flesh and dwelt among the world. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. That word endureth means what? Remain, abide, not recede or flee. That's what we were talking about yesterday. You know, you see people come and, and, and you hate it because you want, you want everybody to see the, the word of God. You want everybody to see, you want everybody to have what you got. All right? Okay? But you see some come and then you see them disappear. Well, when they disappear, something happened. Endureth means to remain, abide, not recede or flee. Start preaching the gospel real hard, what happens? People hit the door. I did, not because Janine just went out and Aaron come went walking in. The family back there. <clears throat> that I didn't mean that. You understand? You know what I'm talking about, though? I mean, honestly, you said you, we're going to have communion today. We're not. We had communion last Sunday, but we're going to have communion today. Everybody stand and let's bring the bread and the wine. It's about eight or ten. Head out the door. Why? You tell me why. You can call me. You can. You can call me whatever you want to call me. But something's wrong in their life. 
Because that's an institution that God said all Christians should do. Right? So don't get mad at me. But you head out that back door, then what? There's something not right inside of you. Well, let's get it right. That's all I want. I want to. I, I don't. I don't condemn them. People, I pray for them. If you don't participate, that's your business. But you're showing, just like water baptism, just like today. Luke's going to show the world. I wish CNN. No, I don't like CNN. Fox could be here or whatever. I wouldn't care. Show the whole world. That we're going to baptize our brother in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of his sin. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost if he continues on. Everybody with me? I'm not ashamed of that. Baptize him anywhere, anytime. I go up in the... We'll we'll go up to (coughs) Northeast Georgia Medical Center and I'll baptize him in that new fountain they got up there. If you walk into North Tower, it runs down the side of the wall, you know. It's going to be hard to get it, but you can do it. You can get them baptized. I don't care. I don't mind. But those who endure to the end, in other words, endure my teaching, endure my preaching, endure Bob preaching, Brother Dale, endure it. Aaron, Luis, I'm not going to disclude anybody. You too, Michael. <laughs> Michael does a good job downstairs. God got a hold of that young man, and I'm really proud of him. <clears throat> give you a rose now but those who endure to the end the end to which all things relate the aim or the purpose those who endure to the end shall be saved when you receive a body change as brother Dale's always told us when you take a body change you can say I am truly born again. But let's endure. Let's endure to the end. And that don't mean... Now, look, when it says endure, that don't mean flowery bed of ease. That don't mean the bed's going to be soft. That don't mean that, that the thorns are not going to stick your finger if you stick your hand in a rose bush. Okay? But it does mean that you got something inside of you that can help take the edge off of that fear. And off of that uh, uncertainty. This world is full of uncertainty. And, and, and literally, we don't know what's going to ne- We do. I'm talking about the world. They've got the people that sit over here and they say, this is going to happen. You know, they got the people over here that say, this is going to happen. We're going to go by, you know, we were going to all go to Bitcoin. Now Bitcoin's done fell apart. We're going to go over to this one. Now this one fell apart. Well, we're going to go to the dollar. Well, the dollar's fixing to fall apart. God will never fall apart. So we can put our dependency that God, if we put ourselves in Christ, that he'll give us what we need. Let's read this real quick and then we'll close. We're not getting anywhere, but we got to godliness anyway. But godliness is deity living inside of you. And remember, when you get born again, that is deity living inside of you. But you have taken that little baby and put a baby inside of you. Because you're a newborn what? Babe in Christ. You got to grow. You got to what? Let it out. You got to teach it. Send it to school. It'd be horrible if you took um, somebody, a, a baby, and never let it, never, never let it go to school. I know we homeschool and different things, but I'm talking about just don't teach it nothing. Oh, what kind of horrible thing would you have? We got all these kids now that are young adults that's learning how to drive. Levi, do you have to give him a muscle car? <laughs> he goes that way toward Jefferson home, that way. We go that way. But you know what? We all, now listen, and there's an example. Here we got Daddy God. Sure, he's never worried, but you're worried. You're worried that you can't drive that car, Right? How many of us have went to the drivers to, to the to the driver's service to take your driver's test and you're like got this man? Only you, Micah. Okay. 
<clears throat> but he drive, he used to drive in Idaho where there's four people lives in the whole state. So <laughs> there's more there's more potatoes than there are people in that. <clears throat> but we all were scared to death, right? Why? Because we didn't know. We had, but look, we had studied. And I'm not going to ask how many failed our test the first time. So, but how many of you failed the test of life? More than one time. But you know what? God's standing there going, hey, it's okay. And then now, you know, insurance companies will tell you that, number one, men are worse drivers than women, right? That's what I said. But she's sitting right back there. On average. Why? Because we like to drive fast. We like, amen, he said. We like to, you know, take a thrill. The girl's like, I don't know if I want to do that or not. So the insurance company says that we guys, are, our insurance is going to be higher because we're more prone to driving fast and having accidents and, and all that stuff, okay? <clears throat> well, same way with God. He knows that we, as human beings, some of us are going to be train wrecks to begin with, or car wrecks. <clears throat> but he does give us assurance. Not insurance. He gives us assurance that if we make it through that trial, that we'll get to be a better driver. And we'll drive like 30 in a 70 as we get older. But we're more cautious, and that's what happens in the Word of God. We become more cautious, and we become more, um, we become more, you know, I was taking a test <clears throat> um, to get my CDL. This was back early 90s, and um, the guy from Fieldale was giving me the test, and, and we, it would be easier because we knew him. And uh, so we're driving along, and I turned down this road, and the guy says, okay, he said, what's the weight limit on this road? I had studied. I knew all my sign markers. I knew how to look under the engine and find the manifold and find the uh, the brakes and find because they're air brakes. So you have air brakes. And Ryan knows what I'm talking about. You have all these different things you got to study. I drove right past that sign. Never even paid attention to it. But every road, if you'll notice now, every road that's a major road. Has a weight limit sign. Well, you didn't know that. That's why I'm preaching today because there's a lot of things you didn't know. Okay? Life lesson 473. There's a sign that says, and it tells you that you can go down here if you're six wheel, riding it right. Six wheel, eight wheel, ten wheel, and it's got a mount. 25,000 pound gross weight limit. 50,000 pound gross weight. It's on, it's on every road. I didn't know that until the dry, until the instructor... The Holy Ghost said, hey, you missed that sign. You missed that sign. You missed what that brother was preaching. But you know what happened? Now, even now, 30 years later, I can just about tell you where every sign is because as soon as I turn down the road, I look to the right, and there's that white sign that says the weight limit, gross weight limit, and all that stuff. So anyway, a little life lesson, but that's the way the Holy Ghost does me. I don't know if he does you. He'll let you take the test, and he'll let you fail every once in a while. But he'll he'll go, hey, read the sign. It's on every road, and it's important. You seen those? You seen those things on YouTube where the trucks driving under a under a bridge? Oopsie! It's supposed to be fourteen and a half feet, and they're like fifteen. That don't fit under a fourteen and a half foot bridge. And the bed comes completely off. All right? He didn't read his sign because back about a mile before that, there was a sign that said, bridge, 14 and a half feet limit. All right? So let's get our sign right. All of us. The sign is now for us to go up that statue of perfect man. Add to these things. Add to your faith. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. You're moving right on up in the line. Let's read what the prophet says and then we'll stop. <clears throat> Fifthly, add godliness. Oh, my. Godliness to be added. What does godliness mean? I just told you about an hour's worth of that. It means deity dwelling inside of you and letting it work. 
Yes. Knowing, see, you when you're born again, you got deity inside of you. Uh, you're a baby, but you don't know how to walk. Right. You don't give a baby a checkbook. Nope. You sure don't give a baby a credit card. Nope. Right. You ought not give them at 16. Amen. 20. Amen. 40. Amen. I'll get some amens in a minute. <clears throat> What does godliness mean? I looked up four or five dictionaries. It just means to be like God. It means to let that deity that's inside of you out and let it work. He's asking you to have virtue, which is strength. He's asking you to have the knowledge of God to know that a preacher's telling you the truth or not telling you the truth. Uh, uh, did some of y'all... I, Sister Barbara, did she send y'all that WhatsApp that she was out there uh, listening to a preacher out there and... Well, you know what she said? She said, thank God for the ministry in this church. Because they were not telling the truth. They were not telling the truth. It was a doctrine that's prevalent all over the, all over the, the uh, message. Listen, and we'll talk about that maybe one day. We're going to have to when we get up to, to the headstone because the headstone message is the sharpening of the pencil. It's the sharpening of the sword. It's not that you don't have the sword. You've got the sword from the beginning. You just don't know how to use it. Brother Brown said then if you've got the sword, he said it takes a strong hand of faith to use it. It doesn't matter if you've got the prettiest, longest, sharpest sword. If you don't know what you're doing, you might cut yourself. Not the enemy. But if you're trained to do the right thing, make the right moves. He said, you can take it right straight to the heart of the enemy. And that's what we'll talk about later on. Because, see, that's a faith that's, that's more than that faith that's right here. Remember, Brother Brown said faith alone won't do it. Not just faith. Now, everybody, there's a lot of faith. But we got to have rapturing faith. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So, to be like God. He says, oh, no, I can't do that, Brother Brown. Oh, yes, you can. you got to let out what's inside of you. Let it work. If you don't have it, please don't sleep until you get it. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the next two seconds. All the virtue, all the things that's in God is in you. All the things. Be ye therefore P-E-R-F-E-C-T. Brother Brown says, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So Brother Brown is, uh, and you can see by, by discernment, you know, he's preaching on virtue and he's, you know, knowledge. He gets to temperance and he makes a couple of statements like, well, man, that's going to, you know, knock a lot of us off. But when he gets to godliness, he starts feeling that the people are like, we'll never be able to do this. We'll never be able to get there. That's why Brother Brown had to, it looks like he backs up and he says, yes, you can. Be ye therefore P-E-R-F-E-C-T. What's that? Perfect. You get way up here now before you're asked to do that. All these things has to be added first. So he's telling them, you've got to add this first. Can't just jump up there. You've got to add this first. Then when you get up here, he's asking you, all right, let me put it in my own words. He's asking you to use what you've got. He's asking you to use all that knowledge, all that virtue, all the things that God's given us, temperance, patience. He's asking you to put it together. And realize your deity. You're part of deity. He's asked you now to be perfect. Godliness. Sons and daughters of God. How many things I could say. Then he talks about turning to Ephesians. Let's read this. A man that's born of God. A son of God. Has to have the nature of God. He has to be like God. He honors God. He's part of the word of God. And in this last days of this bride taking form. Now, this is us, the bride taking form. Just exactly the same power that he was at the beginning. He has come through these organizations and so forth. Listen, folks, God was in the Baptist one day. God was in the Methodist one day. He's not now. Uh, they can split all they want to. There's some good people in there, but the organization... You see what it's doing now? It's shutting churches down. 
whole church, uh, the whole, um, all of Oklahoma, pretty much, 50-something churches pulled out of that, whatever they're doing, to let gay people preach and all that stuff. Then, as I read where in Pennsylvania, the Methodist church is saying, no, no, we own the buildings, so y'all need to leave. That's God? That's the bride in the end time? It's, we have enough fighting with each other now. There ain't no fighting over that. But, but God came through these organizations. But remember what Brother Brown said. They cabbaged down. In other words, they said, this is it. God said, nope, moving on. This is it. Nope, moving on. But listen, this is it. Amen. There can't be nothing else but that. So we're at the end. There's a doctrine according to godliness. And I just proved it to you by being deity. All right? Godliness with contentment is great gain. You know, if you if you say that, what what is contentment? Now, to me and you, contentment is everything is going right. Every bill's paid. Your car doesn't skip. The check engine light doesn't come on. Your tires just inflate on their self, on their own self. We wished. But what is godliness with contentment? What is the word contentment? A perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed. All right? Sufficiency of the necessities of life, a mind contented with this lot. Now listen, we're not supposed to, that doesn't mean to sit down and you're satisfied where you're at. That means you're content where you're at. All right? And I know we're not all, as we were talking last night, there is, there is questions in our mind. And, and, and my sister asked, she said, well, how do you know you got the new birth? I said, I ask him for it every day. What did Brother Dale always tell us? I'd rather seek God every day and say, Lord, give me the Holy Ghost and know that I got it than to just say, well, bless God, I know I got it because I can understand the seals and I'm sitting in the church and I go to Lula and, and realize when you get to the end you didn't have it. All you had was an anointing that made you feel good. Hmm. So seek him every day of your life. Every day of your life, say, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. We talk about Christ was turned out, the kernel, the wheat. See, that's what we're looking at. We're not, we're not looking at plants anymore. Everybody with me real quick. All right, just shake yourself just for a minute. We're not plants, all right? Because remember, justification is two shoots, right? Uh, it's got life in it. But it doesn't look like corn. For those of you that's grown things, you plant corn, If it, it get, it's going to get about this high before it really doesn't look like grass. Hey, man, the only reason you know it's corn is you planted it in that row, <laughs> right? But if you were to just walk out there and say, well, what's that? Well, it looks like grass to me. Start pulling it up. No, but I'll promise you once it matures and gets on up and it puts a character. He puts on the character of what the seed is. When he starts putting on the character, somebody goes, oh, that's corn. Oh, that's a Christian because they act like it. You don't see him on. Never mind. You don't see him on Sunday doing something else. <clears throat> Here's the word: Christ Himself. That's the anointed word which shall come for the rest of His body, the bride. The anointed of the same water that watered the wheat, as we talked about, also watered the tares. Anointed ones. He's talking about anointed ones at the end time. But remember, those who endure to the end shall see the corn. Those who endure to the end shall see the wheat. You will see, I'll promise you, you go plant corn and if nothing else happens, if you get enough water and you get enough fertilizer, you will have a couple of ears of corn on that stalk. All right? You can't make it. You can't change it. All right? Only God can change it. So he's talking about anointed ones. Only the word will separate them, not the signs. We were talking about that last night. Now, watch right here. And we'll read this right here. This will, this will help uh, the sister that, uh, that asked that question last night. 
they're anointed in their second realm. All right? So anointed ones are anointed in their second realm, not in their soul. All right? Now, look. <clears throat> Today, so confused about the evidence of the Holy Ghost and so forth. Satan can impersonate any kind of gift that God's got. But he can't bring the word, word by word. He can bring some. Like I was telling you before, went to a Memorial Day meeting years and years ago, and this brother was preaching on the millennium, and he was, I mean, I still preach stuff that he preached, that he brought out that, that I had not seen about the millennium. But he was sleeping with a 14-year-old girl at that time, very time he was doing that. And got caught and got put in jail. And he's back out now. And if he repents, that's okay. But at the moment, I thought he was wheat because he was preaching the word. But he fell. Somewhere he didn't preach at all. But he cannot bring that word word by word. There's where he failed in the Garden of Eden. That's where he'll always fail. He's talking about Satan. Then he's talking about the false anointed ones. Shout, speak in tongues, dance, preach the gospel, and still a devil. Look at this promise. Know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. He set us apart. He did, not us. If you start blowing your own whistle, yeah, let God blow your whistle. Because he'll blow it at the right time, the right moment. Everything will be just right when he blows the whistle. Because he said he would separate us. He would set us aside. Right there's the promise. All right, everybody with me? Just for a minute now. So godly. That word godly means theos. It is like God or resemble him in any way. Just like I said about deity. God's representative or vice, or vice regent of magistrates of judges. You were made sorry after a godly manner, and this is Corinthians, but you might receive damage of us of nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance Amen. to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Once you come up to the statue of perfect man, when you come up to godliness, there is a carefulness. You're careful. You don't jump into things like we read where Brother Ryan said, scrap heat for ministers, people that want to go out past the program of God, and they have a wreck. If you'll stay in the program of God, realize who you are and what you're doing here. Is that not a quote? Realize who you are, not who I am, not who Brother Dale is. Realize who you are and what you're doing here. You'll be an invincible army. Together we will be an invincible army. Let's continue just for a second. All that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. What the Bible says. But listen. The Bible says that Moses. Moses could have been the next Pharaoh. He could have had, he could have had grapes put in his mouth by the most, pretty, the most beautiful women in the world until the day he died. Never have a want of nothing. They'd fan him. They'd feed him. And he could have a harem of women. He could have all he wanted. The Bible said he forsook that. He forsook that. To be the one to lead them out of that. Wow. What about me and you? Let's don't sell ourselves out for gold, silver, pearls, a good job. If your job takes you away from God, get another one. And all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I'd rather suffer here and know I got eternal life than, as the Bible tells, have pleasure, as Moses did, of sin for a season. Listen, I, I was telling them last night, I'm 63 years old. Dad's 83, but I've only got about 20 good years left, 20 or 25 good years at, at the most. Some of y'all are older. You got to think about that. All right, we need to get out of here and go up. 
Listen, and I, what I'm saying, I'm saying to you young people, when I was 25 or 30 years old, I did, I, I'd have probably said some words I shouldn't have said, but I'd have said there's no way I was going to be old enough to draw Social Security. <clears throat> Starting September. June 2. We've grown old together. We didn't think about those things 44 years ago. There's a lot of things we didn't think about. But what are you saying, brother? Hey, listen, life is fleeting. Yes. Doesn't matter if you're allotted 90 years or, or Sister Cleta, you know, getting in the, into the late 90s or middle 90s. You're not guaranteed tomorrow, kids. There's a lot of good kids have passed away from one Sunday to the next Sunday. We see them, then we don't see them anymore. You look in the paper and, and uh, you see all these young people dying. Um, cancers and car wrecks and stuff. You're not guaranteed, but I promise you one thing's for sure. If you get born again, you're guaranteed eternal life. You're guaranteed that you will rise again. And there'll be a divine healing on one day that your body, your old body, will never be able to get over. Whatever's inside of you is going to go get that old body that you lived in, and it's going to change it completely into a brand new creation and going to make it eternal. That's not a fairy tale, folks. That's a promise. So you can have whatever you want of this world. Take whatever you want of this world, the high life, the high time. I've been there. It's not worth one second of what I got now. Not one second. I wouldn't trade it. Would you? Those of you that's been, that's a, a true, would you trade it? That's what I was saying last night. How could you even want to go back to something like that? Wow. No, thank you. Look, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. That's what I said. A little bit of season, folks. If we're having to go through trials and tribulations right now, you may think that you're going through and it's going to last all your life. No, it's not. You go through a little piece of life and you come out on the other end. But if you'll come out on the other end with God, it's much better. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You remember back when you weren't born again, though? What would you meditate on? What I'm going to do tomorrow? How much more money I can make? Brother John shaking his head. How much more debt I can get in? <laughs> Right, I mean, that's that's what, that just took our whole life over. But now, now what? And it is a real s small part. You've got to worry about bills and stuff like that. But it's all centered around God. It's all centered around you believing that there's a higher, there's a deity that's not living beside you, it's living inside of you. Because the godly are not so. They're like chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. An ungodly means wicked, a criminal. We're all criminals. But guess what? I had an advocate. I had a judge. I had a lawyer. And I had all the witnesses that said I didn't do it. Because I went into God's court one day, and he said, I didn't see him do it. A judge can't do that. Do you know a judge and a jury can't say, I saw that? They have to depend on witnesses, right? They have to depend on somebody to say, I saw that, and then they make an opinion on that. They have to make an opinion on what they own hearsay. Listen, I'm not making an opinion on hearsay. This is what God say. So I'm going to form my opinion on what God say. Because it's a witness. We all are witnesses. I don't want to be a guilty one. I don't want to be a criminal. I don't want to be wicked. Guilty of sin. Romans 5 verse 5 says, In due time Christ died for the ungodly. Thank God because we were ungodly at one time. 
Let's keep going on for a minute. I want to read just one more thing before we go. We talked about reconciliation last Sunday. We'll talk about it again. <clears throat> I'm going to go just close your eyes. It makes people sick when you do that. I'm sorry. But I want to get down here to the end. I want to read something to you in the seventh seal. And then we'll get back to brotherly kindness. Because brotherly kindness is kind of a lengthy um, a lengthy thought. But we got to get to this, and it's going to be something that's really going to help you, and it's going to put everything together. For those of you that's been through the 100 and something, or those of you that's been through 10 or 15, we're, this is the culmination is, is we're going to come to a place that there is an interval. And in that interval, there's something happens. All right? There's something happens in that interval. It's not just, you know, if you say we have an intermission or an interval, that means that, you know, you stop the play or you stop the movie and you go get you something to drink or you go, something's happening. You're not just sitting there asleep. There's something going on. So now notice this being one verse, talking about he's on the seventh seal. I'll read this real quick and then we'll stand our feet. We'll sing a song. If you have a need, we'll worship for a little while and then we'll go to the baptismal pool. It's ready to go. All right, and anybody who wants to be baptized, we've got plenty of towels. Um, we can help sisters, brothers, whatever needs to be. If you need to change some of the sisters, talk to a sister to where to go. Brothers, talk to a brother where to go. All right. Now, between the sixth and seventh seal, something takes place. See? And how lovely that's placed just at its right place between sixth and seventh chapter. We'll get into that. Because if you read your Bible, Revelation chapter 6 is what? When the seals start. Everybody with me? Amen. Shake yourself for a minute. Amen. That's, when it, that's when it says that the first seal opened. And then it goes down to what? goes down to number 6. And then it stops. Right. Then the seventh chapter comes in. Right. There's an interval. Yeah. Then the Revelation 8, 1 says that when the seventh seal opened. There was an interval. All right. If you look between Revelations 10, um, 10, 6, 7, Revelations 10, listen, Revelations 10 is an insertion. It's inserted. Read it. You'll you'll get your trumpets. Your vials will go to 6 and stop. There'll be an interval or or another chapter, and then there'll be a 7th. We'll get into that. But it's the same thing with right here because that's what's going to happen when you come to a place of that we come to a place of brotherly kindness and we see that thing that says Holy Spirit. There's your interval. Everybody with me? Now listen, I want you to look real quick. Faith is not an ad, so you don't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because Brother Brown says seven. There's seven ads. So add to your faith, which is not an ad, add one, two, three, four, five, six. There's an interval and there's seven. There's an interval that you got to stop and just say, hang on a minute. And you know what it is to me? It's the providence and grace of God because we went through this. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like you go through uh, school and you have like six or six periods or seven, six periods, and then you have a recess. Or you have a, an elective. Something that you, you kind of, your mind just kind of, you know, cocks back a little bit. That's what I believe God's doing here. He's, he's man, we're we're striving. One, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> Take a breather. I don't mean go quick going to church. <laughs> Take a breather. All right, and that's what we're look. Watch, and we'll close right here. Now, if you notice in the seventh chapter, we notice between the sixth and seventh, there's an interval, an interval between the sixth and seventh chapter of the book of Revelations. <clears throat> and it's between the sixth and seventh seal that this interval is given. Now we want to notice this. Very important that we notice this little time. I just want you to keep that, stick that in the back of your head because we're going to get to it a little bit later on. We're going to get to that interval because it is very, 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 very important. Number one, it's important to get there. There's not an interval between 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6. It's between 6 and 7. There's a, there's a time to just take a breather, stop for a minute. God knows we're humans, and we just sit there, and we, you know, you sit there, and you pound, and you pound, and you pound, and you pound. All right, hang on a minute. There's something we're going to have to deal with in between there. 
we got to deal with and understand that that Holy Spirit's the same as it is down here. But it was something. It's something we need up there. We got to have to continue on. We had to have Revelations chapter seven to continue with Revelations chapter eight. Everybody with me? We had to have Revelations ten inserted between nine and eleven. For the trumpets, and then for the vials, and all the different ones. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, and then there's an interval. There's a stop point. And it looks like it's covering something totally different, but what it's doing is it's bridging everything together. What this is doing right here, it's bridging us together from going from a Son of God revelation into the Son of Man revelation. All right, and that's what we've been trying to get to for a hundred and something sermons, so let's stand to our feet. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you for being patient. Well, Brother Joe, let's sing a song. If anybody has a need, um, come forward. We'll sing a song if you have a need. Altars here open for you. Let's worship just for a minute. We worship in the Word. Now let's worship a little bit in the spirit realm. Oh, hell, King Jesus, oh, hell, Emmanuel, King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star. You help them make it, Lord. Wherever these hands lay, you've already been there, Lord. I pray that you'll be with our brother in the time he's going to be overseas, Lord. We know that's just like being away from home. And we don't know what goes on in other countries, Lord. We're not in control like we are here in the United States. So, Lord, if our brother goes to another country, Father, I pray that you would just bless him. Be with him, Father. Give him a supernatural understanding. And give him the, the word of the Lord to give to the people and be able to uh, train or whatever he's got to do, Lord. Even just in the natural realm, Lord, I pray that you don't know our brother, Lord, for his job that he has to do. And Father, bring him back safe that he can testify that you were there with him, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, buddy. You'll be all right. We'll rain. Everybody pray for Brother John because he's going to be gone out of the country for about a week, so let's just pray for him as he's gone. He's us, oh hail Emmanuel, King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star, and throughout eternity. I'm going to praise him. That's what this is. And she seen miracles, Lord, happen with these prayer cloths. Now I pray, Lord, that a miracle will happen will to our sister's husband, Lord, that that cancer will go away because this has been anointed and prayed over, Lord, by your people, Father, that believes in you, Lord. And I pray that you'd bless her now, Lord, and may she be a light for the people, Lord. And, Lord, may she be a comfort to the sister, Lord, as they go through trials and tribulations, Lord, that you would help her say the right thing, Lord. 
I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Just give that to him. Eternity, I'm going to praise him. I Amen. You love the Lord? Yes, sir, brother. Brother Darn. Mm-hmm. Oh, bless her. Right. Everybody understand? Sister Mary Dart is in the hospital. She wants she wants to go home. There ain't a person I know who wants to stay in a hospital. I mean you might be in a different ward, but I, I want I want to see her go leave leave that hospital, come back home. That's why they want encourage you to go home because you know you heal better at home. You don't heal better when somebody's poking and prodding and trying to wake you up, and then the next guy's hollering, the next woman's hollering, and but anyway, let's remember Sister Mary, Darty, and and all these ones, Sister Frida, all the different ones. Sister Johnny called this morning. And she told June. She said, "You're my sister in the gospel." She said, "But." But I think you're my daughter. You know what I told her? I said, Sister Johnny, I said, thank you for having her. She said, yeah, 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 yeah. All y'all know, Sister Johnny, you get two words in and that's about it. Love you. She's a fast talker, but she loves the Lord. She wants to be here. And listen, the Lord, I believe, will give her the desire of her heart. All right, so now we're going to get ready. We'll dismiss, and don't forget now, 18 and old, young, 18 and older, all the sisters, you got a card back there. And like I said, if you want to swap whatever you get, then you just get together and do that. Um, me and June didn't have discernment. <laughs> we just bought a bunch of cards through the church, and the church is giving you the, the cards, and we didn't put, don't know what's what, so you'll get handed something, and it'll be a $25 gift card. And we appreciate all of you. Appreciate it. Let's give the mothers another good hand. <clears throat> Remember that when you turn to the book of John and you get to finish reading the book of John, start reading the book of Mama. That's what, that's what the prophet said. Start reading the book of Mama. She's the fifth gospel. All right? And we're going, when you get that, we're going to go downstairs. Uh, Luke's going to be baptized. Anybody else who wants to be baptized, you just show up out there. I'm going to change clothes here. It'll take me a few minutes. Uh, if the deacons would get the covers off and all that, it's all ready to go. Uh, it's all good and warm. I had it on for a couple of days, so it's good and warm. The water's good and warm. And uh, if it wasn't good and warm, we're still going to baptize. But uh, we sure appreciate every person that's being baptized. It's a show that they want to do something different than what they're doing. All right? I mean, we really believe that if you'll repent and be baptized, that God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. That's the whole, that's the ultimatum is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so we're going to go through the ordinances today of water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, Brother Bob will be preaching Wednesday night. This coming weekend, again, get with Sister June about what to bring. We're going to have a taco bar, which will be, you know, it'll be all the condiments and the taco shells and and all that stuff <clears throat> that we'll that y'all will need to get together and bring and uh if you have to get a lot of it like a hamburger and all that stuff the church is going to get all the hamburger that's right i got some of it yesterday sorry but the church will handle all that you just bring you know whatever y'all decide cheese and sour cream and all that stuff so and we'll, next next saturday three o'clock the service starts at three and brother william borlevon will be with us we're expecting a good crowd uh, if anybody has a place for anybody to stay, uh, just in case, I'm not saying it's anybody, but the brother from Macon, I think he's bringing his whole family with him, Brother Ravi, and uh, he was here sometime before. And um, I talked to Brother Martin, and he's going to try to bring a group, uh, his kids up here too. So we'll have a good weekend. And I'm preaching for him the last Sunday of this month. So uh, we'll be at Brother Martin's. Uh, if all goes well with June's hysterectomy and, and everything goes good with her, I'll be speaking down there, and, and whosoever turn it is, you'll have it here on, on Sunday. So just remember that. Remember all these things, all these things that's going on. Uh, good to see, sure enough, to see Brother Micah and, and Sister Esther. It's good to see you all with us. Good to have you with us. Tell you, Pastor, we said hello. 
All right? We love him with the love of the Lord. We love y'all. Just come anytime. Next Sunday will be good. <clears throat> and then the next one. It's all special. Sunday's all special. It's Mother's Day. It's your Mother's Day. Okay. Well, yours too, so well, whatever. Flip a coin. Come up here. But good to have them with us. It's good to have each and every one of you here. And, and uh, the ones that call this place home, we appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do. Uh, there's nothing. You're the body. You move. The body moves. Everything moves together. And we sure appreciate you. So let's bow our heads and pray, and then we'll we'll be dismissed. Get your card, and then head on out to the – oh, they have, probably have to open the gate because nobody's been out there. I closed it back and locked it. But we'll go out to the baptismal pool and, and – uh, and baptize Brother Luke and anybody else that wants to be baptized. All right? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the time you give us. You give us, Lord, the Word of God. And we pray that, that as we navigate through life, that we will... It's okay to look at self-help books and different things, but why not just depend on the Word of God? What you said... Because it'll never fail. It'll never change. There'll, there'll not be a second edition or a third edition or another edition. It's the Holy Bible. And we pray that we will uh, come to that, Lord. That we'll be molded in your image as we continue up this statue of perfect man. Lord, be with the ones that are sick, the ones and names that we've called, and even the ones that we didn't call that we missed. We pray that you'd bless each one, Lord. Remember Sister Jean every once in a while, Lord. Kirkland, we pray that you'd bless her, Lord. We pray that you'd just be with each one. Thank you for the mothers. Thank you for their their diligence and for their, their time that they spend here, that that many of them teach our Sunday school classes and many of them teach our younger younger girls how to do things of life. Father, we appreciate each one of them. And now, Father, I pray as we go to the water, to baptize our brother. Lord, it's others will make a decision to step out and claim the promise that if we'll repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, we shall receive a gift. We're going to give all the mothers a gift today, the sisters. But Lord, the gift you give us is eternal life. Can't buy it. Not for sale. No price on it at all. It's free. But we've got to make a choice whether we want it or not. Father, may our desire be that we want you more and more every day. So go with us, Lord, as we continue the furtherment of this service downstairs. Bless each one. Be with Brother Bob Wednesday night. Give him the words of eternal life to speak to us. And be with us next weekend, Lord. We prayed last night and, and we bound together with others that were here that we're going to have a really good service next Sunday. It's going to impact the youth and even impact the older ones. Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to even love you, much less to be able to sit and listen to your words, Father. Be with Brother William as he comes down here, Lord, and give him the words to speak to us. Just bless us now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. He has made me glad. I will rejoice.